Dragon Hernandez, and I'm here to talk to you about Sylveon, a nice little co-op and solo game brought to us by Z-Man Games. It's got a unique art style and a great sense of gameplay, so let's delve right into it. Okay, so inside the box of Sylveon, you got this nice little uh, storybook aesthetic going for all the cards and stuff, and that's probably got one of the most unique ways of opening a box I've seen in a while, where you actually have to remove these little flame bits just to get down to the story-like rulebook and the components inside, which gives it kind of a great aesthetic in my uh, in my humble opinion. One thing I like about the game is that the box is very simple. You got two stacks of cards, which may or may not need to be shuffled later on. But I went ahead and sorted mine out into the two different uh, groupings of cards that you will actually probably need to have separated which is the base game cards and then the advanced play and the expansions. In Sylveon, this is going to be kind of your basic setup of your battlefield, as it's called. Now, the theme of the game is that you are a forest spirit uh, calling upon the trees and the springs and your animal allies to help you defeat the destroyers of the forest, which are these little fire cards over here. Um, <clears throat> so every turn you'll be going through... Uh, and collecting yourself an army of cards based on these springs, tr uh, trees, and then animal protectors. And while you're doing that, you'll also be setting out these cards over here will flip over and cause different effects to happen, such as new embers to be spawned, uh, embers to move forward, or embers to get stronger. And when they get stronger, you're usually going to take cards from this little side deck that have a new number indicating that they're a raging inferno now. Now you'll win the game if you get through all of these decks along the side, which is about 12 waves, or depending on how you change the game up and the base of the battlefield, that'll change up uh, the difference of difficulty in the game, but this is the standard difficulty. So 12 waves will progress, and at the end of it, uh, you're going to try to have all these outlaying cards be considered green so your forest survives and can repopulate and get all reforested. Um, so what happens is basically whenever one of these embers moves, they're going to move one, two, three, four, and when they hit number five, they'll deal their damage, which is located in the upper right-hand corner here, to your forest, in which you'll then flip over a card and that'll be devastated. But thankfully, at the end of the game, you can also plant trees, which at the end of the game, and only at the end of the game, these will flip cards back over and allow you to win the game. You will only win <clears throat> if you get through all 12 waves and you are able to re-see re the entire forest using trees. <clears throat> uh, every turn you'll be getting a whole group of cards from your hand and you'll be able to play a number of them up to whatever cards you have in your hand, but you're always going to have to pay a cost for them. That cost is indicated in a watermark symbol up here in the corner. Uh, for example, this spring right here, I have to discard a single card from my hand in order to play that. Such as with this tree, i got to discard two in order to play that. So really and truly, this is going to be a bunch of economic resource and management. And eventually you're going to get through your deck and have to reshuffle and keep going through that. Now in this base game, you're not going to have to worry about what cards are in your deck. But in the advanced game, you're going to have to worry about a whole slew of different things. In the advanced game, uh, you're going to have chances where animal companions can be drafted uh, during a pre-constructed part of the game, before the game even starts. But every time you go through your card, your, uh, your deck, you're going to have to uh, discard one from the top randomly or discard two specific ones from your deck. So it's going to get a little harder as the game progresses and the more you use your cards. Now on the other hand, these embers here, they get their benefits pretty sparsely. And usually they're going to come from the base game stuff where they either will get bigger or they will move faster. Uh, getting bigger is probably one of the worst things to happen in the game because what's going to happen is things that are 0 or 3 are going to jump up to being 4s. And 4 is like the biggest number you're ever going to have on any of your uh, protection cards. Trees can't defend themselves, but the springs can. But whenever a spring is defeated by an ember, you're going to be able to draw a new card at least. So there's some mechanisms that keep the game moving pretty well. Not to mention there's, uh, past the base game, a whole bunch of cards here that are used in the advanced game, which allow you to bring in new different animal allies, uh, more springs, 
and the ability to, uh, to prevent fires from spreading up. But when you're playing with that as well, you're also going to have to worry about the embers fighting back in bizarre ways such as making you remove cards from your hand or making you discard uh, animal helpers from you, your uh, deck of cards. Now the game also comes with two more expansions in it. One of them is called The Elements and the other one is called the, uh, oh, the Betrayal Cards. And one of them, The Elements here, uh, you're going to have a lot of these random weather effects that are going to both hinder and help you uh, in the game. Most of the time they're just going to hinder you. And with the Betrayal ones you're going to actually be able to get more powerful animal abilities, but there's also a chance where they're going to betray you and kind of sell themselves out to the embers and cause your forest to burn down quicker. Now another thing in the game that they introduced as the final expansion is pretty easy, is that you get this little fire guy who comes with the game. He's pretty cute looking, but whenever you draw a card out here that has that guy on him, he's going to go to the highest strength value card with that symbol on him, and if he ever reaches your forest, the game's over. And that's kind of just a brief overview of what everything comes in the game and kind of an idea of how to play. Uh, this game has a lot of replayability, uh, it's very difficult at times, and you're going to have to make a lot of interesting decisions throughout the game. So we'll take it into the final thoughts and see what you think. Alright, what I really like about Sylveon is its re replay value. It's got a great sense of artwork and a great aesthetic, and it's a really solid set of mechanics in here. Not to mention, it's got a lot of complexity in it that you can choose how complex you want the game to be every time you play. With those expansion in here, expansions in there, you're looking at a lot of different gameplay. Also, there's a two-player variant where you're going to be playing with a partner, where you get some benefits, but you also have some hindrances, which is actually really cool. Now, a lot of people are kind of maybe overlooked this game based on the theme or the aesthetic, but I really think people shouldn't do that. I mean, if you put a Plants vs. Zombies theme on this, people would probably buy it in droves. I mean, it's pretty much a tower defense game in its own part, and it shows it every time you play. You're going to be going through the game making very complex decisions, and like Friday and other solo games, you're going to have to be doing a lot of things that might not benefit you in the short term, but they'll benefit you in the long term such as planting trees. That's an insane tactic that you have to do, keeping those things protected, or allowing a flame to go through and damaging your forest to, just to not deal with it. Now, that being said, uh, the box itself is perfect for what the contents are. Uh, the cards came a bit sticky, uh, but I'm sure that was just because they're in so much color that they needed to put some sort of powder on them just so they would print and cut well. Otherwise, uh, the box is really solid, it's interesting, but it's probably not going to hold sleeves very well if you're a sleever. So keep that in mind when you're doing your purchasing, this purchasing decision. I'm not going to say don't buy this game because of that reason. Absolutely buy this game if you're a big fan of solo games or tower defense games. Or if you're looking for a great game to play with a loved one or a good best friend or something. As it's a very excellent two-player experience. So we're going to give this game a good solid 8 out of 10. It's got a lot of replay value, it's got great strong mechanics, and a very lovely art style. And a ton of replay factor. So go out there, pick it up. This thing retails for about $20. Uh, I got it from my local friendly game store, and I think you should too. Have a very good day.